When the public sees people that have animals out on the street, their comments to me will be, um, they can't look after themselves, how can they look after an animal? People who are homeless or vulnerably housed and, you know, at some point in their lives have experienced some sort of trauma. If you're coming from a middle class or upper middle class background, you're not very familiar with uh, how poverty happens, how homelessness happens. It's scary sometimes because I think that all of us are one or two bad decisions away from being in the place of the person you see in front of you. What started me doing outreach, I think, initially came out of welfare concern for an animal who was living with someone who uh, could not probably afford veterinary care. For many people, they see people who are on the street or low income or no income as not always being able to care for themselves and not having the means to care for themselves. And so logically think that therefore they would not have the means or capacity to care for something else, such as an animal. One of the common uh, uh, criticisms that I receive as a nurse that deals with street-involved people is when the public sees people that have animals out on the street, their comments to me will be, um, they can't look after themselves, how can they look after an animal? Why should they have animals? They can't, you know, they can't care for them. So my comment is to ignore that initial stigmatism and focus on the value that the animal plays in that person's life. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. People who are homeless have not been able to develop relationships because of the transient style of their life, for whatever reason they're there. So when they have the opportunity to have a pet and have that significant person, significant companion in their life, it means the world to them. I've been a veterinarian for 25 years and I've been doing outreach work for about eight years with Michelle. And I really enjoy this work because it has given me a lot of insight into the clients we serve and the fact that um, these clients love their pets as much as anybody else does. And most of them need them more in terms of the relationship. What's happened over the years is that we've started to see that these welfare issues that I had were probably not always founded in, in reality and that the animals are, for the most part, very well taken care of. And we've started collecting information and data now on the animals that we've seen over the last 11 years in outreach clinics. And some of the data that we looked at was uh, the body condition score of over 300 pets that we examined through our outreach clinics. What we found was that over 70% of our pets were in ideal body condition score. Now you compare this to the average North American household pets where we find over 55% of those pets are overweight. But these animals are in very good health and welfare, and in fact, in many aspects, in better health and welfare than some of our housed pets. I think what's really important for all of us to understand who have our health, who have social support, that, that we're really just very lucky and that uh, nobody ever plans on being homeless. If you look at their lives and what they don't have in life and all the losses and crises that they have, the animal actually gives them that little bit of um, friendship, companionship, uh, that unconditional love, that my animal's always here even though my world sucks and everything's wrong in it. A lot of our, our clientele can't find that unconditional love in other human beings because trust is gone. The one constant could be that pet and it's non-judgmental and it's unconditional. These pets often offer the uh, only opportunity for them to experience unconditional love without judgment. Pets are a reason that some of um, the folks we serve get up in the morning. They're reasons to live, and that's the only reason I need for our clients to have pets. 
we see that these pets have positive impacts in the lives of their owners. In fact, over half of the youth said that having a pet had given them a reason to live, and almost half said that having a pet had saved their life. How can we say that these people shouldn't have these animals when they're good pet owners to the best of their ability, and they can have such profound positive impact in the lives of their owners?